Hello, you are listening to Get Good Fox, and in this episode, I am going to be reviewing the container fort so that you can preview this base and decide for yourself whether you do or do not want to invest the resources to claim this location. In the previous review, I covered lock and key six-man location, and I also got the answer to the question, what region should I move into after I'm done with the container fort, because that is the last base in the Cascade Hills region. Our commenter Joe Davis gave me the answer that I should go to Mayor Valley because he wants to see Whitney Field. So that's exactly where we're going to be going after this, to Mayor Valley to review all of the home base locations there. Anyways, it's time for my new episode introduction, State of Decay 2, The Container Fort. Alright, to begin, let's take a look at the Container Fort's map location. The previous base I was in, Lock and Key, was in the northwest corner of the map, so the Container Fort's kind of a counterpart in terms of the map because it's located in the far southwest corner. What this means is that the positional strength of the Container Fort is fairly average. It would have been stronger if it were located in the middle of the map because that means a random mission wouldn't be that far away. But as it stands, the container fort is in a town center, and it's surrounded by town centers, so it's not going to be as bad as, say, more and more distributing, which is located out in the middle of nowhere. But let's actually get down to the container fort and see what's going on. Bear in mind that this is an eight-man minimum base to enter, and it does cost 3,500 influence to get in there. So listening to this guide to see whether or not you do want to spend the 3,500 influence in the first place is a pretty good idea. Upon arrival, you're quickly going to find that this base is basically a gigantic rectangle with a whole bunch of stuff bolted onto it. It doesn't have any bizarre features like the purple brontosaurus or like that castle tower, but it does have that weird graffiti of the horse with the dog on it. The interior can be a little bit confusing. It's got like a whole bunch of like ramps and ladders all over the place, but it does have these awesome battlements up top that really do help to make it feel like a fort. Speaking of forts and battlements, what is it like to defend this fort when the zombies attack? Well, my zombie attack actually occurred at night, which highlights an interesting feature of the base. With all the shooting positions, you'd think that the nighttime would negate that because of how dark it is, but the fort actually features these massive floodlights which illuminate a surprising amount of area, making shooting realistically possible although not at the same kind of range in the daylight, but it was still a cool feature. I don't know if you need to have electricity to have these active or not, but either way, it was a neat bonus. On the other hand, the inside of the base, when the zombies do penetrate the defenses, it does feel a little cramped and claustrophobic because there's not a lot of breathing room. It doesn't really have much of a courtyard like most bases, and I did find myself accidentally falling off ledges and climbing up ladders when I don't want to, but I think it's something that you'll adapt to over time. All right, though, enough appetizers. It's time for the main course, the meat and potatoes of the episode, the facility review. This is what you're going to be looking at immediately after purchasing and moving into the container for it. And what surprised me right off the bat is how clean it looks. I mean, look at this. There's only three facilities pre-built into the base. Two of them are permanents, which means they can never be torn down, but one of them can be. However, you might actually wind up leaving it there, surprisingly, because it is a level 3 machine shop, which is basically a stronger variation of the level 3 workshop. Since it's already level 3, it means you did not need a mechanic to upgrade the workshop to level 3. However, being an 8-man base, you probably have a mechanic already, so if you wanted to reposition the machine shop, you could tear it down and just build a level 3 workshop anywhere else in the base. I'm going to go ahead and tear it down, though, so that you can see a complete recustomization of the base. And this is the situation that you're going to be looking at. You have two large facility customization options, and you've got six small facility customization options. So this base grants extensive customization options. Now, let me be honest. Being an eight-man facility, I was disappointed that it didn't have a third large facility option. It's going to take more than that to impress. However, this base does have some unique features that help to compensate for that lack of a third large facility. The first one I'll talk about is actually the command center. It has a unique ability built into it called Castle Doctrine. What it does is provide 
four shooting locations for your AI allies to fire at incoming zombies, and it also functions as a watchtower minus any of the upkeep, so no ammunition and no building materials. As a little bit of trivia, this ability, the Castle Doctrine, is actually a reference to laws, also known as Castle Doctrine or the Castle Laws, which allows someone to defend their property with force, up to even lethal force, free of persecution. The amount of force you're allowed to use varies between land to land. But let's go ahead and talk about the level 3 fire safe storage that you have pre-built into the base, which once again allows you to bypass another trait needed, this time construction. However, it still allows you to reconstruct it into the other two facility options. Another great addition to the base. Lastly, let's talk about the covered beds, a feature that's easily overlooked because it's not exactly advertised. That central location where that machine shop was originally built is special. No matter what you build in that location, you're going to get plus eight beds on top of whatever you build there, just as a feature of the container fort. This is what I mean when I say that the base has features to compensate for that lack of a third large facility, because there actually is a large facility known as the Spartan Barracks, which is a warlord-only building, and it is a large facility that houses eight people with a morale penalty, these covered beds give you the same feature on top of a small facility for free without the morale penalty. <laughs> Alright though, here is my customizations to the container for. Consider this a sample, a template. Feel free to make modifications. This isn't necessarily the best way to make the base. The first thing I had to do though was change my outpost options because the plus eight beds made my plus six outpost beds irrelevant, so I swapped them out for a mixture of material outposts and an espresso outpost. As far as the new facilities I've added, we've got a watchtower built in for more security, we've got two hydroponics facilities built, one of them is growing food, the other one is in the central location growing medicine, and it also gets that plus eight bed bonus. In the top left corner, we've got a workshop. You just have to have one. Always have a workshop so that you can salvage and repair weapons. To the right of it, we have an infirmary. Always have an infirmary so that you can recover from injuries. Down below, we've got a kitchen for the extra stamina and morale foods that you can cook. Then for the large facilities, of course, I gotta have my lounge. My lounge gives you huge morale bonuses, plus it lets you play Xbox if you've got the OG Xbox mod. And the new addition is the auto shop for the second large facility. I chose the auto shop because I really like the passive 30% fuel economy, but it also allows you to build vehicle kits. These kits can be used to upgrade your existing vehicles. For example, I will go ahead and upgrade my Brogan Sport. Build the associated kit for your vehicle, in this case a light kit. Make sure you have the vehicle parked in an actual parking space. Walk up to the front of it where it will say upgrade vehicle or access it through the base menu directly and then you can upgrade the vehicle. When you go to upgrade it, it'll tell you what these upgrades are going to do and as a result you will get a transformed vehicle ready for the zombie apocalypse. And that is the container for it, the largest base in Cascade Hills. So what is my verdict? Is this base good or not? And I think this base is awesome. It's definitely worth the 3,500 influence points to buy it. Even though it doesn't have that third large facility, it has so many built-in benefits like the Castle Doctrine and the Plus 8 Bed that that basically is a third large facility. I like the shape of it, I like the feel of the battlements and ramparts, I like the floodlights and shooting some of the zombies as they attack at night, but the best thing is the extensive customization. There are no facilities that are not the absolutely necessary ones that you cannot tear down and replace and just redesign the base into whatever you want. There are no pre-built facilities that you don't need because you get to build all of them. And that's what makes this base so damn awesome. But at any rate, like my video if it helped you decide whether to move in or maybe not to move in to the container fort. Subscribe for future State of Decay content and remember that you don't have to be good to get good.